show again. Today I'm going to start tackling a bunch of different white videos. I've had, after all the black ones, I guess, I got some requests, different kinds of whites, ghosts, clothes, hair. I'm going to start with um, clothes today. Um, I... Um, originally, my go-to combination for white clothing um, is an E4041 and the blender um, combination. Um, and I still use it a lot. Um, but ever since they released the E81, the ivory, I found myself, especially for clothing, um, it's kind of replaced my 4041 combination a little bit just because I really love the look of it. Um, for clothing, it kind of looks like a, an oyster colored silk almost. So I'm going to be using both on this image today just so hopefully you can kind of see the difference. This is a little Victorian uh, Christmas. Ivy from this year's Christmas release from Tickled Pink, and she's stamped on Copic Expressit cardstock with Memento Tuxedo Black. And I'm going to start uh, with the coat, and it's going to be our E81, our colorless blender, and a little bit of um, W0 to help blend it a bit. And I'm going to start with my E81, and from what I've colored of her so far, I've established that my light source is coming from the right because that was kind of matching her eye line, so she's meeting that uh, that light source. So my shadows are always going to be heavier opposite that light source. And so I'm just going to start laying my color in opposite that. And the trick uh, with doing anything white isn't that it's really that hard to color because um, there's it's it's restraining yourself from putting too much color down actually um, you want to rely on the whiteness of the cardstock for the most part um, to give you the look of a white object or garment in this case um, so it's just not being too heavy-handed um, with the color that you put down we're just getting those shadows. Okay. Now I'm going to take my colorless blender. I'm just going to go from the opposite direction, kind of blend into it. Like I said, there's not a lot of coloring to white because um, the more you put on, the less white the finished result is going to look. It's going to look muddy if you put too much color on whatever color you're using, whatever combination, whether it's warm grays, cool grays, um, whatever you're using to create that white object, the more color you lay down, the less white it's going to look in the end. So it's just being... Uh, very stingy with the color. We just want it to be in those shadow areas that is going to hint at it being a solid object. So now I'm going to go um, back to my E81 since I kind of, while it's still wet with that colorless blender, even less than the first time, this is just going to become those darkest shadows. always opposite our light source, kind of down in this little uh, fold in the fabric. Create a fold here a bit. And I'm going to come down here because as it wraps away from our eye, you know, as it bends, it's going to have a little bit of shadow there too. Okay. Up under this bow, that's going to be Casting a shadow. Now I'm going to take my W0 and I'm going to go right over top of that E81 and kind of pull into our white area. It's just another way to 
kind of knock down the color of that 81, the E81, um, and, and blend it a bit. And the quicker you work on this, um, the better, the more um, natural blending you'll get by the ink staying wet, um, which makes it helpful too in this. Come up here, reinforce that little dip in the fabric and the bends. Okay. And now back to my zero, just to kind of smooth out some of that w, w zero that we just put on. Okay, and I'm not going to fiddle with this too much more, otherwise we're going to start going really gray. I'm going to show you now the E40, 41, and zero. And that I'm going to use, I still really like it for fur trim, anytime I'm doing fur trim. So I start with my E40, and I just kind of squiggle it to kind of give it the texture of a, a fur. It's kind of like how I do curly hair on little curly haired characters. And this, it doesn't get a lot of blending. Um, because I don't want to smooth out too much of that texture. And I just kind of do tighter curls where I want it to be darker, and as it gets more towards the light source, I loosen them up, and I don't color as much of that area. Again, we're still relying on that white cardstock to be our primary source of whiteness um, in the image. To my E41 just to kind of create the darker shadowed areas so even less of it just kind of as it wraps away from that light source down along the bottom of her hem on her little fur muff down in here along the trim up here And then the zero, same kind of movement because I don't want to blend too much, but I just kind of hit it where I want it to be lightest. That's just going to knock down the color a bit. Okay. Now I'm going to do her little bonnet in the E81 zero and W zero. I just wanted to do them separately because as this dries, um, you'll see the color, you know, it brightens up just with this Copic Express it quite a bit because as it's wet, it looks really dark and it, as it dries, it lightens up. So I want you to be able to see that. Okay, so I'm going to start with my E81. And I'm just kind of hitting the... Because that's a, you know, a cylinder type um, shape. So, you know, the, since our light's coming in this way, you know, the light's hitting here, it's going to be lightest in the middle and be darkest as it curves away from that light source. And then the inside of her brim back here isn't going to have much light hitting it because it's back deep inside the, the bonnet. But as it comes out towards the brim, more light um, starts hitting the inside of that hat. So we'll fade out to white there. So now we use our blender pen and just go over that. Really just getting it wet, hitting back here where we want it to be really white. Okay. Back to my E81 just to hit the shadows again. And to my W0 to kind of blend it into the white a bit. And ideally, maybe someday there'll be like an E80. Um, that would be nice. But for now, the W I find the W0 to work kind of kind of okay. It's it's a good it's a good enough substitute, but too much of it and it starts turning out pretty gray. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Um, 
just because right now, to me, it's looking too gray, and I want to hit it with the blender, but it might be fine as it dries, so I'm going to let that um, do its thing. And, oops, I forgot her little collar under her chin earlier. That was just a little bit of E81 and some zero. It doesn't have to be too specific. Okay. So that re that's white. I mean, really, the less color you put on, no matter what kind of um, light colors you're using to create that, that white image, um, the better, because the more color, the less white it's going to look. That's just the way it is. Rely on that cardstock. Leave a lot of um, white open areas, and that's how you're going to create the look of a white um, image, like for her, the gown and stuff we, that we did. Uh, see if you can see that and kind of the difference between the E81 combination and the E40. The E81 is you know a little bit more the ivory bisque kind of color, and the 4041 definitely has a brownish um, bit of a tone to it. Um, but I like both of those for different things. And that is it for the white clothes. We'll move on to maybe ghosts next. I'll see you in a little bit. Thanks for watching.